Mike, how much thought have you given to the idea of ever becoming immortal? Well, I've, I've long lived in fear of uh, another immortal hunting me down. If, if I were to ever gain immortality, I, I, you know, I've, I've heard the stories that they like to do battle with swords and chop each other's heads off because something, something, there can only be one. Isn't that a shitty deal? Like, you, you get to be immortal, but live in yeah, fear. Yeah, but you get to be the only one. <laughs> well, not even that. It's the fact that you're immortal, but there is one thing that can kill you, and that's having your head cut off. And yeah. oh, wait, the whole time you're immortal, there's going to be dozens of dudes who are like you that want to come cut your head off. Do the one thing that can make you mortal and kill you. So, I mean, it's like, what's the fucking point? Yeah, I don't know, to fight with swords. <laughs> the whole point is to be a badass sword fighter, the, I guess. The, yeah, that's that's the whole thing. You're tempted by immortality, but there can <laughs> only be one of you. So whenever you come across another immortal, you guys got to throw down, and and it just makes it so that everybody's not immortal, you know? Because then it kind of loses its its unique status. It's it's no longer like oh I'm immortal if if everyone's immortal. Like oh man, here here we go. There's fucking eighteen of us now. Welcome, welcome new guy. <laughs> no, instead it's it's not welcome new guy. It's like, oh, you're the young buck? I'm going to chop off your head. Yeah, that makes sense. It does make sense. It's perfect. It makes perfect sense. You can live forever. Everybody that you know dies. And the only other people that can keep you company, you're destined to murder or be murdered by. Like, what if what if there was like what if you're you're an immortal? And you've you're like on year seven hundred, and all of a sudden you come across this other immortal, and it's it's an immortal of the opposite sex, and and you're both like, oh hey, you're you're kind of sexy. Then you know you can't do anything. You know these two could be together for eternity. Literally, they could be together forever. They could defend each other, not you know protect each other, so that other people wouldn't chop off their heads. But if you go to sleep. You're putting you're putting your immortality in the hands of of this other person, and you could just as easily have your head lopped off in the middle. Like, what better way to lure someone? That's true. Especially if you're like a hot chick, and and you're immortal, and all the dudes are immortal, and they've been around forever, and they're all like, you know, oh man, I could really use some some lady love right about now. And then she shows up, and she's like, lady love. <laughs> and off with their head and then and then like a decade later new guy comes up and he's like oh hey i i heard bob got decapitated yeah it was a shame we were in love and then he's like i could love you and then and then <laughs> she's she she's like you know what it's been a decade since i've had some love and then they they run off together and then off with his head and that's how she whittles them all down she uses her her wily feminine charms against stupid dudes that can't get laid and they're just easy pickings you know it's 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 like a fly in a spider's web yeah that would work if i mean if you guys haven't gotten it by now we're talking about highlander lore but in the film he did ha he was friends with some of the other immortals i mean how do you work that out is this when it bro when it comes to just us two we're gonna flip a coin and but that's gonna be it yeah no no I wouldn't trust the life that of a mortal is not the life of me or for me, unless I could go be a hermit somewhere and and not be bothered, like by anybody. I want no human contact. I just want a, a series of fucking dogs as my my companions, a little frolic in the woods. Can't you do that technically? If you did have the immortal power, I mean, if you're one of the Highlander immortals, you can literally just cave yourself in somewhere. Yeah, but then if they find out, it's head chopping time. And I don't. I want nothing to do. Then who's going to feed my dogs? You know, you, you can't chop my head off. Wouldn't that be rad? That's the the next Highlander is is you, Mike, and your it's me. Your cavern me just, is, your cavern is broken open by a fucking archaeologists in 2018. And you're like, yeah, they found me. 
Yeah, then I, then I'd have to chop some fools' heads off. It'd and they're been... not even immortal. I'd just be pissed off that they they <laughs> disturbed me. Like you've ruined my life of solitude. <laughs> I must now decapitate each and every one of you. You will tell no one of this. It had been like five thousand years, so you go into some like weird rage and start killing everything. Yeah, it turns into a horror movie really quick. I just start hunting down every human and chopping off their heads. And then like the final battle is me versus Tom Cruise. <laughs> And let me tell you, it'll be a battle for the ages. <laughs> I don't know, he's got his Scientology moves. He does, and he does all his own stunts. Shit. I would have a stunt man. So, you know, I guess he's already got one up on me. Well, you watch the UFC, Mike. I think you can take him. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't I can't hang off the side of a building with with my pinky. I've seen him do it. I've seen him in a fucking car crash. Tom Cruise is crazy. You can't you can't fight crazy and win. They're unpredictable like a fucking park squirrel. Well, I came across a story about a dude who was supposedly immortal. So when you say supposedly, what do you what do you mean? I don't know. I mean, if there's evidence of somebody being immortal in history, the only way would to be seeing somebody who's supposedly dead. That's kind of like the only proof you can have of something like this, right? Yeah, hey, I mean, well, but is 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 that really proof, though? No, there's something like that can always be fooled. But if, if yeah, if somebody who died is being seen elsewhere, I think that'd be the only way to document that. And that's exactly what we have with this dude, Count Saint Germain. They called him the Deathless. Have you ever heard of this dude before reading about him? No, not before reading about him for the show. Pretty interesting. It's, it's a very detailed. Account. And, and and just so you guys know, he uh he is not a saint. He was the the count of Saint Germain. So he himself was not a saint. So it's not like he was granted immortality by by God's hand or something like that, and that's why he's a saint. It's just the place that he lived. That's good to point out. I'm glad he did that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because I don't want people look at like thinking that we're we're talking like miracles and stuff here i mean well it kind of in a way depending on your definition of miracles but he wasn't a, a prophet of god or anything like that and god didn't you know there, there's no tie-in with christianity or or god for that matter in in this case of immortality mm -hmm. but the first heavy documentation about this dude saint germain started with his arrival in France in 1756. And I, I guess it's it's purported that at this age, he was 56 years old at this time. But he had been in, I, I guess I'm just going to say Vienna, Austria. Yeah, when that, he, that is correct. He, when he was summoned to help a very sick but very important dude, uh, this guy was the Marshal of France, Marshal de Belle. The marshal had suddenly become gravely ill. I mean, they didn't expect him to live. But the count came to help, and he did. He was able to cure the marshal. And the marshal was so impressed that he took him back to France. And right after that, he proved himself a miracle worker by curing uh, this uppity rich lady of mushroom poisoning. They could they describe her as a lady of the court. But after the marshal's story... And now his abilities proven, he quickly became like a hero to all these elite French upper class people. He definitely seemed impressive by what they write about the guy. He was knowledgeable in medicine. He spoke many languages. Uh, he was a first-rate experimental chemist, which kind of made me think of alchemy. He is tied to alchemy in, in a lot of the uh, mythology surrounded, surrounding him. Like, he's even referred to an alchemist sometimes. Really? Mm hmm I can see that. Uh, he's also a master violinist, and he was a, like a professional critic of painting. They said he was able to name the, the person who created drawings within an, a couple seconds, drawings or paintings and stuff. He'd be like, oh, that's a blah, 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 or that's a blah, blah, blah. And he was always correct. So he, he was super educated, it appears to be anyway. Um, but he also appeared to be very wealthy, Everybody described him as wearing tons of diamonds and jewels, as well as having many servants. And uh, he was mysterious, but he had no problems answering any questions 
that any of these people who admired him had. You know, questions like, you know, how are you such a good dope medicine man or something like that? How do you know so many different languages? But he'd already always reply with this strange explanation. It wasn't just like, you know, oh, I practice. He would say he would ha- he had a lot of time to study. Or he's even told people that he was 4,000 years old. Now, when we hear about people with exceedingly long lives in history, I mean, 4,000, that's a fucking lot, right? I, I would, that's like, that's longer than a lot of the people in the Bible, like in the Old Testament lived. Yeah. But a lot of people admired him for these weird, mysterious stories and claims that he'd make. But there's a lot of people who didn't like that. And there's actually an account of some nobleman who is talking shit to one of his servants. And they told him, he shouted, your master is a liar. And the servant replied, quote, he said, oh, I know better than you. He tells everyone that he is 4,000 years old, but I've only been in his service for a hundred. The count told me that he was 3,000 years old. Whether he's added 900 years by error or whether he's lying, I do not know. And that was weird to me because how has this servant been serving this dude for a hundred years? So if he is able to live that long or is immortal, it seems like he's able to share it. Another servant was questioned about his claims and he said, quote, perhaps the count forgets that I've only been in his service for 500 years. So apparently this guy's only, yeah, apparently this dude's 500 years old too. That could have been a smart ass just being a smart ass though, but it's two different cases to where people who worked for him or served him claim to be extraordinarily old as well. Yeah, that's, that is weird. So maybe, all right, I, I've got, I've got some ideas here, but I'm going to, I'm going to let you continue on with the story before I, I get in there. <laughs> okay. Word of his magical healing ability spread all the way up to King Louis and his mistress, the Madame de Pompadour. They became friends and she introduced him to the French's elite. So he got pretty popular. Everybody loved the guy. Like I said, there's some people who were pissed off by his claims. But a a chambermaid of uh, Madame Pompadour wrote a letter or wrote to somebody, maybe a diary. I don't know, but they got the writings, but she wrote this and it's, I don't, it's kind of weird, but a man who was as amazing as a witch came often. This was Count de Saint Germain who wished to make people believe that he lived for several centuries. One day, Madame said to him while at her toilet. So I guess she was taking a deuce when she was talking to him, said, what sort of man was Francis the first? A good sort of fellow, said St. Germain, too fiery. I would have given him some useful advice, but he would not have listened. He then described in very general terms the beauty of Mary Stuart and La Renee Margaret. I don't know who those people are. You seem to have seen them all. Sometimes, said St. Germain, I amuse myself, not by making people believe, but by letting them believe that I have lived from time immemorial. Then Madame de Pompadour asked him about Madame de Gregui, who thought she had known St. Germain and Venice 50 years ago. It may be so, said St. Germain, but I admit that even more possibly the respected lady is in her dotage. So this guy was pretty much known by everybody, even to some uppity people like Madame de Pompadour, but even the king heard about him and knew he was there and stuff like that. And one thing that's noted about the time he spent with Madame de Pompadour is that he kind of made her easy with his claims and made her not just basically laugh at shit he would claim, like how old he was and who he knew, is that he admittedly kept it like a joke with her. It was always him just being silly and would tell her and only her that, you know, people believe whatever they want. But the lady that she mentioned the Countess von Greggy, whose husband had been ambassador to Venice back in 1710, did recollect uh, St. Germain's name as the name of somebody that she had met through her husband while in Venice. It was so long ago that she asked if his had his father been in Venice at that time, and he told her that he, in fact, was in Venice at that time. And she remarked that that was impossible, and that the man that she knew at that time was already 40 years old. 
And he, she, said, she said, he smiled mysteriously and said, I am very old. And he went on to detail Venice uh, from 1710, so much so that she started to believe him. And she remarked and kind of yelled at them, you must be a devil. And she, she noted that St. Germain trembled and left the room in a hurry, <laughs> which is kind of a, a weird reaction. Did that make you think it's wizardry now instead of cool medicine man? Nope, I still have other ideas. <laughs> nice. But I will let you continue, and, and, and I will touch back on that. Well, as you can imagine, now that when the word devil is linked to St. Germain, some folks started to dislike like him uh, more and more. The king's foreign minister, the Duc de Choiseul, or Choiseul, we'll say, I don't know French, went as far as to hire an imposter to impersonate St. Germain, who would go around to all the local bars and make crazy claims like he knew Jesus and just obvious weird shit like that. So people would just start turning against him, I guess, making him seem ridiculous. But as I mentioned before, it didn't stop his his charm and appeal enough. He soon after this started a meeting with the king. He was interested in talking to St. Germain because he supposedly had these secret techniques for dyeing silks and leather. And he thought that he might be able to cash in if he was able to learn these techniques or he can teach it to his people he eventually met with the king and saint germain had made the claim that he was able to remove flaws from diamonds again linking to alchemy doubting this claim the king gave saint germain a diamond that was said to be valued at six thousand francs Uh, sure enough he returned a month later with a diamond that was then examined and said to have been worth ten thousand francs The king was so impressed by that that he immediately moved him into the castle and built a lab for him to work on his dyeing process and, again, work on stones and stuff like that. Some thought he got way too close to the king. There was this dude who was pretty much a troublemaker for St. Germain, was that Duke de Cherisel or whatever, wrote a quote in a letter that it's strange that the king is so often allowed to be alone with this guy. So, And he, he goes on to remark that, you know, Kings always have an armored guard, a few of them around him at, at all times. And they said that St. Germain was, was able to be left alone with the king, which concerned him a, a bit. But uh, this dude wasn't the only person who disliked St. Germain. I don't know if it's because of the shit he said or just maybe he screwed them over somehow. Who knows? But in 1760, the king sent St. Germain on a diplomatic mission to Holland. He wanted him to investigate Holland's relationship with England The king thought that St. Germain was the perfect dude to persuade England to sever all ties with Prussia at the time, who was an ally. And upon arriving in Holland, he found himself staying in the same hotel as a dude named Casanova. We all know that. that He's just like a woman seducer, right? A great romantic or... So this is the famous Casanova? Yes, sir. Huh. Interesting. But he did not like St. Germain at all. And uh, he even took the time to write about St. Germain in his memoirs. He wrote, This extraordinary man, intended by nature to be the king of impostors and quacks, would say in an easy, assured manner that he was 300 years old, that he knew the secrets of universal medicine, that he possessed a mastery over nature, that he could melt diamonds. So obviously Casanova didn't like the guy, but he would... uh, go so far as to send somebody to portray an oracle to the officials and government of Holland and warn them about this bullshit bullshit artist who was on his way to spy on them about the Prussians and the English and shit. So once again, that troublemaker, the Duke de Choisel, used this opportunity to have St. Germain arrested because now they can accuse him of, of being a spy and making the king of France look like an asshole. But after that, his reputation was pretty much destroyed. So he moved on from France. Uh, it's said that he went to India. He went to St. Peterburg, Petersburg, Russia, and impressed everybody there so much that they eventually made him a general. Uh, he was so popular with the Russians that his favorite beverage, Senapot tea, was renamed Russian tea. This guy sounds like one of those guys that, that you meet and like everything you say you've done he's like oh yeah oh yeah i did that last year and but he did it better and with cooler people than you that's what this guy reminds me of that's what i got too i mean if it was 
I mean, like, to what end? Why would he be making these claims? I and mean, he seemed to be already to be rich. He had servants. He had jewels. Uh, I don't. I don't know why he would make these claims other than to just brag and be a weirdo. Unless they were true. But the damage to his reputation caught up to him while he was in Russia, and he once again moved on. He traveled around the world until his death in February 1784. So apparently he is not deathless. Let's see here. So if he was 58 years old when he first got to France in 1756, he's 56. Almost 90 years old. He would have been 84. So, I mean, that's a ripe old age to live. Anyway, he should have been dying around that time, right? If he was a human. Yeah, I mean, if you were a human, you'd think you'd be uh, nearing the end, at least in most cases. So, yeah, that's not non-believable. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely not unheard of, but it's not uh, typical either. But, I mean, they couldn't even get him into the ground before people started seeing this guy. Uh, there was a French writer and teacher and friend of St. Germain's that she saw him in Vienna in 1821. There was a, a lady named Countess de Adher... How do you say it, Mike? You said yours sounded better. <laughs> mine sounded better. Yes. I completely butchered it. No, really? Then I'm going to do worse, yeah. so you go ahead and do your butchered version. Uh, uh, all right. The, the Countess de Adhemar. There you go. Yeah, that's definitely not what it is, though. My, my <laughs> French accent is beyond abysmal. But she claimed to see St. Germain in 1793 and warned her that Marie Antoinette would be killed and said that she would see him five more times and, quote, do not wish for a sixth. And she said she did, in fact... That's interesting. Yeah, that's a weird one. But she said she did, in fact, see St. Germain five more times from 1793 all the way up to 1820. I mean, let's say he faked his own death, but now he's reaching into some pretty creepy numbers as far as age goes, if he's being seen in 1820. And and according to some cases, he had already lived for 4,000 years at mm -hmm. that point. Oh, man. I don't know if uh, <laughs> this is... I love reading stuff like this because obviously this wasn't him, but in 1972, a dude named Richard Chanfrey appeared on French TV claiming to be St. Germain and attempted to prove it by what? demonstrating his knowledge in alchemy by transforming lead into gold live on TV only using a camping stove. And was he successful? Yes. What? Mm-hmm. But if, I mean, if St. Germain looked like he was a 56-year-old dude when he was 56, or claiming to be 56, mm -hmm. I'm sure this guy on TV in 1970-something must have looked like a ball of human flesh and fucking <laughs> skeletal parts. You never know, man. Maybe he just looked awesome. Yeah, well, I mean, they said he he drank and only ate things he prepared. Some would call his drink an elixir. But they said that every time they had dinner with the guy, they never saw him eat. Ever. So this this is the part where I feel like everything comes together. And it all points to him being a vampire. So you've got him never eating in front of anyone. He allegedly only ate oatmeal. Oh, really? That was it? That's that's he, he lived off of oatmeal that he would prepare himself. So I don't think it was oatmeal. His servants claimed to have lived with him for 500 years. So vampires, as we know, are able to turn other vampires or turn people into vampires. And he's... Uh, uh, apparently able to live forever and even after his death he still lingers around i mean shit he died in 1784 and then the next year the french freemasons chose him as their representative at the great convention how's that work hmm and he was also reportedly seen by the empress of russia in in uh 1786 really yeah so if, if his re his death was reported but then he's being chosen by the Freemasons as a representative and meeting the Empress of Russia. Like, it's not like this is just like some random Russian 
woman that he's meeting. Mm -hmm. This is the empress of fucking Russia. And that, that's how it was for most of uh, people claiming to have seen him after that. It was always... Yeah, well, he was in high society, so you mm -hmm. know those are the circles that he ran in. But it's it's really interesting that he his death was reported in 1784, and you're getting these significant appearances by him after his reported death date. And this is after everyone has been reporting that he's looked the same for as long as everyone else has known him. He hasn't aged. And some people reporting that he's thousands of years old, his servants saying that they've been his servant for 500 years. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. I didn't come across any other specific dates that claim to be his actual death date. Because I kind of instantly thought, it's like, okay, well, who said that's the date he died? Why do we trust that date? But, I mean, everybody who made the claims of seeing him knew he died. They weren't saying that, no, he never died and he's still just old walking around. He definitely had a fucking funeral. Yeah, it's so weird. What do you think about the people claiming to be St. Germ Germain? I mean, maybe if he going with the vampire theory, maybe he fucking just slept for <laughs> from 1820 yeah, something to... i mean that's that's that is a, a possibility maybe he was a vampire or maybe he was a being that was cursed to to live like there, there's this um it, it's kind of like a biblical prophecy or a, not prophecy a, a biblical legend but it's also it's kind of taken on a few different forms but there's there's an idea or a story about this figure known as the wandering Jew. And he uh, was a, a Jewish man who taunted Jesus while Jesus was on his way to be crucified. And he was cursed by Jesus to walk the earth until his second coming. Um, depending on the story, it's um, what, what he did varies. Uh, in some stories, he insulted Jesus on his way to be crucified in other stories, he slapped Jesus across the face. And in that story, he was the doorman for, for Pontius Pilate. And he, he slapped him in the face when Jesus came through. But in other stories, he was just a shoemaker. And he insulted Jesus on his way. After Jesus cursed him to walk the earth, he could not die. And according to the legend, he's still walking the earth, waiting for Jesus to return. No, there's no link to that in St. Germain, is there? Do, the, do people think that he was this wandering Jew fella? I, I mean, that's a possibility, too. I don't know. I didn't think about that. But there, there is, in the King James Version of the Bible, there's, there's some evidence to this kind of... Um, in Matthew 16, 28, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Hmm. That's how the Highlander thing got started. They were all the apostles. Maybe. That's very fucking interesting. I mean, to, to guarantee that there's some immortals walking around? Mm hmm <laughs> If we got to believe everything the Bible says. Yeah, I mean, but, I mean, from from the Bible you can take that as not being literal that you will be here, but uh, maybe that the soul will survive. Maybe he turned them into aliens and they're flying around abducting people <laughs> and checking on the human race. Maybe. <laughs> or maybe maybe they're fighting and chopping heads off now. Maybe that's why they have to. Maybe, maybe the story of Highlander just got it backwards. And maybe they're all craving death because they've been living for centuries. And they just want to die. So when you meet another Highlander, you fight to the death. And if you die by the, the Highlander, then it's it's looked at as a mercy. Because now you are no longer forced to, to live on earth until Jesus returns. You, you can die. That fucking makes a lot of sense. That puts a different angle on the whole movie now. Yeah. But the reason you can't just go into the fight and, and just let the dude win is because it's dishonorable. And if it's dishonorable then you curse yourself but if you die in honorable battle then you get to die a warrior's death and you get you get all the the honor that goes along with it so you have to fight you got to fight like like your life depends on it even though you want to die 
either way, you're it's either you get the mercy of death or you're helping your fellow immortal to his death. So it's not so much a contest as it is mercy. And then there'll be one left in the end, and he's forced to to wander the earth until Jesus comes back. I'm just going to replace all the shit I know about Highlander with what you just said. Do it. <laughs> let's let's get a fan a fan filled film made where finally the last Highlander is standing there. He kills he kills. There's two left, and he kills his rival finally. And as soon as his rival dies, as soon as his head hits the ground, light pours from the sky, and Jesus comes down. And he says, you may die now. And then he reaches his hand out and touches the Highlander and he disintegrates. Dude, that's in perfect. In the glory and splendor of Jesus. <laughs> Do it. Print it. Copyright it's, Mike of the Woodcast. <laughs> copyright Mike of the Woodcast. This is recorded. You cannot use that idea without my permission now or I will sue the pantaloons off of you. <laughs> but if, 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 seriously though, if you're a filmmaker and you want to do it, just send me an email and I'll totally give you a thumbs up. And probably... Add more to the story by sitting down and writing it out. Yeah, I, I want a part in it. I mean, not an acting part, but maybe an acting part, but definitely a writing part. <laughs> so do it, guys. Do it. Get me involved. You're going to be the chosen one, dude. You're going to be the last standing immortal that Jesus kills. No, I want to be the second to last. I want to be the one that gets decapitated. <laughs> you call it Highlander the Golden Lamb. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I, mean, I, I was thinking of, about people being immortal and claims like that. And there's probably some other cases, you know, there were people are seen after their supposed death. We've all heard of those stories, but that's kind of something that wouldn't really get out. Maybe as technology gets more advanced, they, they'll find people that are like that. Like when they want to fucking put the chip in everybody, they make Google fucking skin or whatever. I wonder if they'll find some people that are like that. Well, there there are people that are that have been reported. Like, there's this dude in in uh, China who his name is Li Qingyun, and uh, he died in 1933 at the age of 197. And there was a, a story written about him by the New York Times. And in the story, this guy claimed that he was born in 1736. But the article itself noted that respectful Chinese people mentioned that he was 150 years old in 1827. Ooh. And that would have pushed his birth date back to 1677. And uh, this, this is backed up because there was a government congratulatory message that was printed in 1827 in honor of this guy's 150th birthday. So if that's to be believed, this guy died at the age of 256 years old. Wow. And who, yeah. who's to say this wasn't the annual faking of your death? So you can move to another continent and live another 200 years. Yeah. Well, the, there's a, a Tai Chi master named Da Lu, and he stated that Lee learned Qui Gong which is a system that incorporates breathing, meditation, body posture, and it's believed that following the system will promote health and help with martial arts training and um, give you a, a longevity. But uh, this, this guy, Dai Lu, he said that Lee learned it from a hermit and the hermit that taught him how to do this was over 500 years old. Hmm. So, I mean, and, and this, this isn't like it's an old legend. This is, this happened, this, he died in 1933. Damn. So, yeah, he's been around, he was around a while. And it was apparently an interesting enough story that the New York Times picked it up. What's your, what's your thoughts on this guy? I mean, like with the last one with St. Germain... Your vampire mm -hmm. story makes a lot of sense in that case. Yeah. Yeah, it of course it does. Yeah. Yeah. So what about this guy who's just... This guy, I don't know. He, um, I mean, like I said, the New York Times picked up on it, so they thought it was a big enough deal, but I don't know. I, 
I I wonder if that congratulatory notice by the government was just another guy with the same name. But it is. It would be interesting to note that that guy was also long lived. If he was 150 years old at that point, mm-hmm. um, and then this guy with the same name also lived to be almost 200 years old. Wow! But there's there's always stories of of monks that have been able to attain a long life through meditation and various forms of uh, of yoga, things like that. But it's, I mean, it, it seems to be something to do with religious tales because, like I referenced earlier in the Bible, you've got people that are living centuries, and uh, there's there's people that have tried to explain it away um, that in the translation they confused lunar cycles for solar cycles, so instead of being months, they they had years. So like if if the person was said to have lived 900, 900 cycles or whatever. And it was portrayed as solar cycles rather than being 900 months. They, they said 900 years. But even still, I mean, that's a long life, but it doesn't work because there's some people that died in the Bible before they were even 100. And they were significant characters in the Bible. And if you, so if that was to be applied that would mean they would have died at like 18 years old or something rather than I can't, I can't remember exactly what the math was, but it's, it, it doesn't make sense if you, if you apply it to everybody. Mm-hmm. And that very well could be the case with some of the more ancient cases of this, right? I mean, like we talked about, I forget what the hell it's called. I know you know it, but that slab that had the list of all the Kings of Babylon, I believe. Yeah, there and there's also one in Egypt as well. That and the the list in Egypt predates human civilization. Wow, and it has but there's the kings of Babylon. Well, the 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 Egyptian kings list has like god kings on it, and I think it goes all the way back to Osiris. Whoa! But um, the Babylonian one, the first like hundred kings on the list or something were all like they lived like a thousand years or something it's ridiculous maybe not a hundred but the first the first kings on the list were all living around a thousand years and it changes after what they mark on this slab the the great flood happens right somewhere around there i don't know the um the exact date but it would make sense because that's when a lot of things changed Mm -hmm. was around that point the the time of the great cataclysms and if I remember correctly, the next kings, the next couple kings actually after that, they lived to be like 300 instead of like a thousand years. And then it started to even itself out to a normal human human lifespan, like after the third or fourth king, after this flood. So it seems like it being a gradual thing like that, maybe it was just human bodies adapting to an extremely changed environment. Yeah, I mean, they, they could have... Um really changed the the atmosphere depending especially if you're following the idea that there was a like a asteroidal impact on earth that created the the uh conditions necessary for all this flooding it was um yeah it's pretty uh it it would make sense is what i'm trying to say it would make sense because the all of the debris that would have been thrown up in the air, the addition of all this water into the ocean, it would have changed the global temperatures. It would have changed the way that the sun hit the earth. It would have changed our atmosphere. It would have done, it basically would have changed the earth. So if, if there were any advanced cultures or different types of beings, or if, if the human design was different in any way back then, like even even the way that we breathed or anything it would it would change yeah and and that could result in in civilizations dying off and uh megafauna dying off even even plants that would have affected plant life it would have affected ocean life mhm yeah you can't forget that there's types of fauna that are yeah extinct now too you know plant life that yeah went extinct when all that shit went down with the dinosaurs whatever killed them I say lasers. 
Yeah, but we're getting back to the Sumerians. Um, it it is it's a, even before the the Great Flood, there was they were already declining in age. Uh, the, initially, they were thought. I mean, there was the the first one that's on the list was said to rule for forty three thousand years. <laughs> yeah, that don't that can't be right. Even if we're talking about thousand year old people. Well, then I mean, it it goes down like that. That the next two were thirty six thousand years old, then twenty nine thousand years old, twenty nine thousand. The next few were in the twenty thousands. Then it goes down to eighteen thousand. Then it drops way down, and then you get fifteen hundred, twelve hundred, twelve hundred, and then it drops again to nine hundred and sixty, and then drops down to nine hundred, then eight hundred and forty, then seven hundred twenty, then seven six hundred seventy. But then it goes all the way back down to uh, Gilgamesh, and Gilgamesh was said to rule for 126 years. Now, do you think hearing those numbers, I mean, the the, the graduation of the drop is, is is shocking for sure. But with the, like you said, with the lunar cycles, do you think this is a different measurement of time that they're using? Maybe, but they're not the only. Like I said, the Egyptians did it. Um, there's there's even Vietnamese kings that were said to rule for uh, long periods of time, and this this goes back uh, between uh, two thousand eight hundred seventy twenty I don't even twenty eight seventy nine B C and twenty five or this is between twenty eight seventy nine B C and two hundred fifty eight B C. So there there was eighteen kings that ruled in that span. Hmm. And most of them were ridiculously old. So the first one on the list, he lived to be 260 years old, but he reigned for 215 years. And then there was the next king ruled for 506 years, or he ruled for 400 years, but he was 506 years old when he died. And the the oldest out of all of these uh, was the fourth king. He was 646 years old and he had a 300 year reign. And then the shortest reign on this list was a 90-year reign, but the dude was 512 years old. So he was like he was like 422 years old when he became king. Damn. Yeah. What do you attribute to that? What's that about? I don't know. I don't really know much about um I don't really know much about Vietnamese folklore or legends or anything. I I I'm just aware of the list. I wish the Babylonian text had reference to shit like that because you mentioning them being alive this long but ruling for this long it gives mm-hmm. you a, b- a better understanding of what they're actually claiming here yeah but i mean it it seems like there's a lot of um a lot of this sort of thing going on um there's another one it, actually this one's a, a christian one um but in 1912 the Maharashi of of Kalis was re, it was reported by uh, it was reported by a missionary, but they the missionary reported that the Maharaji of Kalis was over three hundred years old, and he was a Christian hermit who lived a life of solitude in a in a cave in the Himalayas, and he spent his time just in in deep prayer and meditation. Hmm. But he was the, he's got his whole the, this whole whole thing around him that he was uh he was born in Egypt and he ended up being baptized by someone related to St. Francis Xavier. So maybe in this regard he was granted by God the ability to survive or maybe he's doing what I said earlier and he's really a highlander and he's just holed up in a cave in the Himalayas. Yeah. Like, fuck you guys. You're not chopping my head off. I'm just going to chill here with my dogs. Yeah, I wrote or, more. Or in ones. this case, my yetis. <laughs> He's probably protected by an army of yetis, and no motherfucker is going to chop his head off. It's like, you got to get through my yeti army first. Yeah, he's had hundreds of years to train them and befriend them. Yep. And it's going to be like the, the scene in the movie is going to be the classic thing. He's going to be like just sitting there meditating, and all of a sudden another Highlander barges in and sitting before him is, is this group of like 
four or five massive yetis and the fight ensues and the yetis charge and he's the the highlanders dodging and bobbing and weaving and slicing and cutting and blocking and the whole time this dude's just sitting there meditating and finally after all said and done there's there's yeti arms and heads and toes everywhere (laughs) and this dude's standing there all covered in yeti blood with his sword breathing heavily and then finally the maharashi opens his eyes stands up draws a sword and then does that awesome kung fu movie thing where he sticks his hand out flat and then just goes like come here with his fingers (laughs) <laughs> and then it's on and then the 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 cool music starts up and they and they go to battle. I mean shit, maybe that maybe they could be the last two. And then Maharishi kills the other guy and then Jesus evaporates him with his with his splendor. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, "You, Maharishi, are the wandering Jew, and I give you leave to die now." And then he touches him and he whoosh. You explained to all of them. <laughs> I mean, it would be way easier to do it way back in the day, but, I mean, faking your death, it couldn't have been a hard thing to do, right? Yeah, I wouldn't think so. I mean, they didn't they didn't have the stuff we have, no. So they could have just moved on. But faking longevity would be a little harder, I would think, unless, unless it was like a family secret that gets passed down from father to son. Hmm. And they all have to have, based on this, this like, family prank or or whatever you want to call it they they have to give birth at a certain age or they have to have a a son at a certain age so that there's a 10-year period where they can pose as the other one and kind of transition like oh my god he hasn't changed at all but really it's just you know a series of of sons and nephews and grandkids and all that shit just going down the line posing as the same guy to keep the legend alive Mm -hmm. and i mean if you only saw someone every 10 years you're and and then you see someone with a young face that resembles that person you could be like oh my god he never ages because you don't see him enough to be absolutely 100 percent familiar with the face Mm -hmm. but if the face has some familiarity to it you'll be like oh it's that guy and he looks the same he (laughs) hasn't aged a bit yeah, it's fascinating to hear these stories about the people who actually grew old. You know, we all know they probably, like I said, look like a ball of pink mush when you're fucking 200 years old. But with the cases of the vampires, I mean, they get turned into a vampire and they stay that age. We're not seeing it with these people who live to two or 300 that you're talking about. I mean, I'm sure they all look like shit before they died. They, these people are aging. That's That's ageist, Mateo. <laughs> they're they're beautiful amongst people their own age. You just you just can't see it because you're looking you're looking through the filter of youth. You goddamn kid. Who the hell do you think you are? Well, I mean, you guys can look at people who live to be 90 something and, you know, they're kind of like flesh-covered skeletons there. Yeah, but I bet other 90-year-olds are like, "Damn, you sexy." <laughs> oh. Let's let's Rub sagging flesh together. That's gross. If you just imagine See, two super... Why is that gross? It's beautiful, Mateo. <laughs> oh, Love no. is beautiful. Regardless of your age, feel free to rub up on your other body parts as much as humanly possible. Actually, especially if you're old. If you're old, you should be seeking out body parts to rub up against because, you know, t- time your days are numbered. You don't have a lot of time. Have a good time. Enjoy it with other with other consenting adults. And, uh, you know, just, just get it on, man. That's horrible. That is not beautiful. It's not, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. You've seen like these news reports where somebody's like, you know, Mary Lou is turning 101 today and you see what they look like. You just imagine them humping. I mean, like they can't, they're just like, Meh. but they're probably How just you rubbing know they limbs. Can't, Mateo? You have you have you asked any hundred year old ladies if she's getting it on lately? No, but I can imagine. All right, with then you the can't form verify her body. Get out of here. Skeletal appearance. Body form has nothing to do with it. It is. They're brittle. They can't. They're probably just fucking dry. You gotta be. Well, you, just gotta, you gotta be delicate, and you need to use lube. Oh God! They can't even like, dude. A hundred and one year old dude probably can't even hold his own junk on his own. That's why he has a partner to do it for him, Mateo. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. <laughs> Gross. No thanks. 
I'm glad they stop at like 60 with most of the cougar adult videos that are out there, right? <laughs> I I don't know. I'm sure you'd be able to find older than no. that if you looked hard enough. No. You know? There's there's something for everyone. If there's a thing, there's porn of that thing. Who is that for? If there's an 80-year-old guy watching porn, he's going to watch the young ladies. If he's going to be there's, looking- there's there's porn with balloons. I guess you're right. I mean, if people can find balloons sexy, then they're going to, you know, there's there's something for everyone, Mateo. Just because it's not for you doesn't mean that you should poo-poo all over it and and say it's gross. You're you're hurting a lot of feelings out there. There's We've got a listener right now somewhere out there, and he's listening, and he's like, you know what? I've got a 96-year-old girlfriend, Mateo. <laughs> Fuck you. And now he's not going to listen to our show anymore because you're an asshole. That's so right. So I hope you're happy. Fucking Gustav in, in the Netherlands is upset with you. I'm sorry for the... I, I don't know why I said the Netherlands, but the dude's name is very likely Gustav. And he's he's crying into a pillow right now. And he's never going to listen to the show again. He's probably going to send us b- and stuff. Oh. Or, or shit in a box. I don't and, even think we can put that phrase in the podcast. without <laughs> being flagged by the government. Well... We're on Skype, so the government has has heard it. <laughs> There's no hiding it now. Gustav is sending you a b- and he's a terrorist. That's scary. And he has ties to <laughs> and he's mailing Mateo mail <laughs> of human fecal matter. Oh, I'm beeping all this out. Nobody send me any of the things that... Send him all of the things. <laughs> all of them. Oh. Just because I think his 92-year-old girlfriend humping is gross? Yeah, exactly. You're going to send me poo-poo over that? Yeah, he's going to send you worse than poop is just the beginning, Mateo. I think if somebody has reasoned with himself enough to uh, want to hump 90-year-old people, they've probably reasoned out that most people aren't going to share the same view of their dusty old meatbag hump buddy being as beautiful wow. as they Wow, <laughs> way to... Wait to to just oh that's that's awful that's awful Mateo I can't believe you called another human being another human being a I don't even recall what you said now but it was very offensive <laughs> and Gustav is sad and now you're just rubbing salt in his wounds you monster ah uh, monsters are the people who are humping the people who are so old they probably can't even say no. <laughs> See, now, now you're talking about raping old people, Mateo. <laughs> this is getting out of hand. What's out of hand is all the geriatric lovers. Uh, Needs to be stopped. And I'm forming a group. <laughs> it's the anti-octogenarian squad. You cannot hit if it has a fake hip. Well, here's the thing. At least you know she's not going to get pregnant. Ugh. See? What if, what if she does? What if something weird happens? It's impossible. The baby she comes out a hundred years old. She doesn't have the th- the the required things for for baby making anymore. <laughs> Gross. Yeah, but anyway, immortality question mark. Who knows? Like I said, it's an easy enough thing to do if you're fucking a vampire or not, or you're taking part in a grand or contest, or you're a wandering Jew. Yeah, I mean, you can just. Fake your death and continue wandering. I have a plant co- that's called a wandering Jew. I wonder if it's immortal. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Probably takes like next to nothing to survive. Probably. I don't know. It's it, We've had it for years and it's purple and it's awesome. Hmm. I never thought of the origin of that. I just thought it was a silly name. Yeah, I've heard the, the term and, you know, the name the wandering Jew, but I never knew it was linked to somebody who's supposed to be wandering the earth forever, you know, being an immortal earth wanderer. Well, now you know. Thank you for listening to the Whatcast. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, iTunes, and YouTube. Enjoy the podcast. Get yourself a Whatcast t-shirt or a sticker pack. Who was that dude on that one episode? Try the links in Homie's page. All this and more can be found at www.thewhatcasters.com. Thanks again for listening and have a great week.